You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, stocktwits.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the optionsinsider.com. The Options Insider Radio Network is sponsored by Fidelity Investments. Fidelity's Option Trade Builder tool can help you confidently build an options trade in three simple steps. Just choose a strategy, select a contract, and then review the benefits and risks of the trade. Learn more about Option Trade Builder at fidelity.com backslash options. Options trading entails significant risk and is not appropriate for all investors. Certain complex option strategies carry additional risk. Before trading options, contact Fidelity Investments by calling 800-544-5115 to receive a copy of the characteristics and risks of standardized options. Fidelity Brokerage Services, LLC, member NYSC SIPC. And now, it's time for the show that breaks down the options market. From unusual activity alerts to market analysis, strategy overviews, listener questions, and much more. If it involves puts and calls, then our all-star panel will break it down. It's time to hit the option block with your host, Mark Longo from the Options Insider Media Group and co-hosts Uncle Mike Tussaw from RCM Asset Management, Andrew the Rock Lobster Joe Venazzi from OptionFit.com, and Mark the Greasy Meatball Sebastian from OptionFit.com. And now, get ready to hit the Option Block. All right, everybody. That music means it's time once again to rock out with everyone's favorite bi-weekly option show. Yes, it's time for the Option Block. My name is Mark Longo. You guys know the dance by now. You can find it lots of places live Monday and Thursday, noon central, 1 p.m. Eastern. The website, theoptionsinsider.com. On social media, just look for ad options on most of the big platforms, and you'll pretty much find us. And make sure you hit us up. Questions, comments, insights. We do indeed like to hear from you, particularly on Thursdays, because... We devote a lot of time to your questions on Thursday, so get them in all sorts of fun stuff on the docket today. Help me break it all down for you. First, let's, where should we go? Let's spin the wheel. Okay, we're going, it landed on a one-eyed lobster, which means we are going out to Maine, where we are joined by the rock lobster himself, Mr. Andrew Giovinazzi from OptionPit.com by way of Carmen Line Capital. Mr. Giovinazzi, how go things in the land of the pit, sir, and the land of Maine? Uh, land of Maine is... Cold and frosty, and we have snow. Uh, apparently, northern Maine got like 10 or 20 feet of snow in the county. They call Rustic County, 20 feet of snow. So uh, we do not have that much. We only have a couple feet on the ground. Um, but the days are getting longer and nicer, and, you know, I have a feeling that spring will be around here shortly. The pit is, is doing swimmingly well. Swimmingly well. So you're offering swim lessons now? Is that what I'm taking from all this? You're, you're getting into the uh, nautical yeah, arena? Yeah, yeah. I even have, I have a client, he's coming up to, uh, to Maine in about a, in a month, and we're going to do some intensive one-on-one -on -one training. So it will be my first ever actual Maine visitor. You're actually having a person come to the hinterlands. Wow, I didn't, I didn't know that was even available. That was even an option. I guess if someone wants to come to the far fringe of civilization, you will accommodate them, maybe make them some delicious meatballs? Uh, possibly if, if they, if they, if they desire, uh, if they desire a home cooked meal or we, we do have restaurant establishments in our town, which, you know, there's, there's not a lot of them, but there, we do have them. Yeah. I hear there's a sweet uh, place called Mickey D's right outside the LL Bean. So you can always hit that for, for some fine gourmet dining out there in the hinterlands of Maine, joining us a little bit closer to home in the hinterlands of Chicago, some might say. 
otherwise known as St. Charles, where we are joined by Uncle Mike Tussaud from St. Charles Wealth Advisors. Uncle Mike, I keep saying that, you know, what are the odds that you would open up St. Charles Wealth Advisors? And you just happen to be in St. Charles. What are the odds of that, sir? Well, pretty high, actually. But nonetheless, uh, maybe view it as like a, a premium seller and a, and a high probability pr- trade. Okay, then. I like that. With that analogy in place, let's keep on rolling right on into the trading block. It's time to break down the latest topics, trades, and trends in the world of options. It's time for The Trading Block. All right, everybody. Welcome to The Trading Block on this kind of weird, wild, downside, biased week in the markets. You know, for most of the better part of this year, it's been mostly upside. Uh, You know, we've had sporadic sell-offs here or there, but certainly nothing of the extended variety this year, at least, like we've seen over this past week where it's been predominantly all da- all red on the screen, all downside. And that is the case again today. We got uh, the S&P off a little bit more than half a percentage point. A NASDAQ similar percentage downside. The Dow leading the charge off about two-thirds of a percentage point out there, which has been the case for a while. Dow showing a lot of weakness in the old school economy, shall we say, uh, to use uh, oft oft abused cliches about the Dow versus other indices. Of course, the market pretty much on pace this week for pretty much its first losing week, at least since January, maybe of the year. I'll have to go check. But uh, definitely, it's been a while since we've had a net losing week, certainly for 2019. Uh, So a lot of people perhaps scrambling and scurrying and looking at these levels out there, perhaps rolling some puts, perhaps taking advantage of the resurgence of volatility, 16, a little bit north of 16, right around 16.3 or so coming into showtime here today for the VIX. That's up over a handle, about 1.3 handles since last show. I do believe in the vol views. I was prognosticating a little bit more firmness in vol. I don't know if I was prognosticating this much, but I was prognosticating a little bit of upside. Of course, we got a day. We shall see how all that settles out. We get a little bit of rally to end the week. I'm sure we'll see a lot of that vol coming in, our old friend VXX. Also, uh, still north of that 30 handle, you know, it flirted with it ever so briefly. It was threatening it. And then it said, nope, uh, up to nearly 39 right now. Uh, today, all about 38 and a quarter off about half a handle or so out there. So a lot of interesting stuff. Apple still far away from our old level of the 150 level. We were all debating not too long ago about 174, a little bit shy of that, 173. 94 looks like so a lot of stuff to sink our teeth into let's start in the hinterlands of chicago uncle mike sir it's been an interesting week a lot of red on the screen what's been lighting up your tape sir well i think uh, mario draghi today for example uh, markets are down today <clears throat> so it looks like uh, from, from what i can tell of what he was saying i think that uh, uh things are not as good as they had hoped they would be uh, over on the other side of the atlantic so i think that's kind of what's scaring the market a little bit today Uh, Not a ton. I think that if it's something that we need to be really alarmed about, uh, we'd be down a heck of a lot more than we are. Uh, But that's one thing that's that's, uh, kind of what I'm looking at right now. Uh, Still no news of China deal. Uh, And then, of course, 2,800. Uh, We keep keep coming back to that. We're having a hard time getting through that number. And so it's one where at some stage we're going to be below the 2,800 mark enough to where uh, I might be dipping my toe in the water and getting some deltas in this market. Uh, and I'll look at it later today towards the close of, of, of trading. But for right now, uh, there are a couple of roadblocks, but once the roadblocks are through, I uh, don't see a ton of other things that are standing in the way. Uh, in terms of some individual things with which they're lighting up my tape at this point in time, financials seem to be taking some of the brunt of this uh, downturn today and that uh, XLF is down just on under 1% on the day-to-day. Uh, so it looks like that's what's uh, kind of getting hit uh, in a lot of ways for, for uh, what's actually happening today. Uh, my formerly beloved Apple, of course, only down 43 cents on the day, which that's really not a lot. And uh, that's kind of what's going on in the world of St. Charles Wealth Management today. I thought for sure when you started laying into Mario, you're going to regale us with your skills at Mario Kart, sir. But not the case. Talking Mario, the other Mario. Mario Draghi out there. Go figure, you know, a a lingering trade war for the better part of a year with two of the largest economies in the globe. It's going to have a bit of a a lingering effect on other other economies that were already kind of weak to begin with uh, around the globe. Go figure how all of that works. But I hate to give you a spoiler, Mr. Uncle Mike. Maybe maybe this is going out on a limb, but I hate to break it to you. I don't think I don't think we're hitting twenty eight hundred today. Can you handle that? 
Maybe not. Well, no, what I'm saying is that I might start dipping my toe in the water with some below 2,800 plays. He sells puts. P-U-T-S. <laughs> what is he, Warren Buffett? Uh, but, <laughs> uh, but no, I was just teasing you. I, I know 2,800 <laughs> is your big level you want the market to reach. And I just, I just like to tease. You know, it's fun. Uh, yeah, we're not, spoiler alert listeners, not hitting 2,800 uh, today. Mr. Meatball, when you're, or Mr. Meatball, Mr. Rock Lobster. When you're not making delicious meatballs and you're watching this VIX uh, climb, first off, what zone are we back in these days? How are the zones looking? And then B, what else is lighting up your tape over there in this in this post Mario world? Um, you know, I, by the way, you noticed too saw he was mean to you, and then he goes and insults me, right? Like one two. Got to like, be equal one, opportunity. Two. Ay, yeah, 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 yeah. I yeah, said yeah. you make delicious meatballs. Where's the insult in that? Well, at first you call me Mr. Meatball because you, you that don't is even know insulting. How, you're your I, own guest. The I will only grant job you that. You have really is to understand who's on your show for the day, and the, the most basic responsibility you still can't. Get I have a few more than that, but yes, I see where you're going. <laughs> anyway, uh, you know what I did today on our Vol report? I said, "Do you remember when? Remember when we had that Vol poking up? I don't remember when it was. Um, it might have been September or whatever." We say. You know, the reason for the vol has not revealed itself. I was trying to find the quote, you know, online from YouTube. Like, you know, I think it was uh, Samuel L. Jackson. You know, they, they haven't, the Sith have not revealed themselves. So I'm thinking maybe, maybe at the, like the low for vol at the beginning of it was 13 and a half. And it looks like we we're just going to kind of do nothing. That, like the first hour of the day, Monday, vol was in the ash can. And then. You know, like one of my vol rules, as soon as it's not doing what you think it's supposed to do, you got to change gears. So the the surprise was, okay, well, we keep going up. and the, Everything was kind of weak. And, um, you know, certainly we were at 2,800, now we're 2,750. Easy enough for uh, VIX to get up there. But I realize moves are still not – like. We're not getting that crazy underlying movement. Today, it's definitely up there. No, like today's up there. Um, I don't see how that Draghi news is anything good. You know, I don't think Europe can get it together. I think they're coming to the end. You know, I don't know how long they're going to be able to hold on. But, you know, you have all these economies that are structurally just spend too much money. I mean, our government right now is spending too much money, but can easily stop it. <laughs> uh, but they seem incapable of doing, of course. After I learned uh, from some friends how the government actually spends money, but um, right now that there's nothing good about the Europeans going back to the QE well because it it only provided. I'm not going to. I to be perfectly honest, I think it's all a waste of time, and they have to do some real restructuring and take some real pain. Uh, but ten years after the, you know, the financial crisis is over, they have to reinstate QE. That I. To me, that's a big black mark. Um, it could be part of the trade war, but you know, you've had some instability with Brexit. You've had, uh, you know, and Europe also loses uh, when the Chinese steal their technology and stuff. So they've had the same. I think they've had the same competition problems we've had, and they're not set up as well for it. So. I I don't take it as good news. Uh, I would say that. You know, as this percolates out a little bit, um, maybe it might be a while till we see 2,800 again. Um, that's certainly possible. Uh, you know, the getting a real trade deal with the Chinese where they actually stop stealing people's stuff, I think that would be a give give the market the boost it needs. Uh, we'll see what earnings look like. Uh, we'll see what GDP looks like after, you know, the government shut down the first quarter and all that stuff. Um but as of right now, there's not a lot of good news. Um, Vol's been going up, mostly, I think, on the lack of good news. It feels like somebody knew Draghi was going to say this, which is why Vix, you know, why Vol was staying bid for the last four days. But the market was, you know, just kind of creaking around. Um, so until we see something real or we start seeing some great earnings, um, I'm – you know, I'm, I think our range here is like 2,700, 2,800, and we're not going to break out of it until we have a change. So um, I think that's where I don't think it's going to change. And, you know, the Europeans did not add any good news. 
in the old days, like, oh, QE, we rallied big, and now we're down. So the whole QE stimulus as a cheapy way, you know, it's. I think it's like, uh, you know, it's like it's a. Uh, what do you do when you take those like helium hits, you know, and your voice gets all squeaky? I, you barely even get that effect out of QE anymore. It's. I think it's. This will be maybe hopefully it's the swan song of uh, policy. I don't think that was very good. It didn't help us in the long term. It might have helped in the short term, you know, to keep people's spirits buoyed or whatever. But I don't think it created any long term lasting benefits except we just, you know, the, the Fed's just holding basically monetized the entire <laughs> I think, you know, the Fed monetized the last, you know, seven years of the deficit. Um, so I don't think they have the room to do that anymore, to be honest. Um, so I think he needs, so th maybe this is a reality. We need real solid fiscal policy. Um, the trillion dollar a year deficit our country has mostly from insane spending. Um, like all this stuff is like, these are things that weigh on the market that need to be resolved that aren't getting resolved, politicians will probably never resolve them until they absolutely have to, which means SPX is 2,000 and not 2,800. So, you know, I'm not trying to be overly bearish, but the, none of this is good news, the fact that they got to go back to the well. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Spoken like a true diehard Maine libertarian fundamentalist, sir. Uh, <laughs> go figure. The, the big I'm loading my gut as we speak. The big government largesse of Europe. I'm guessing that never really resonated with you anyway. So to hear, to hear more of it coming out, it just adds more of a bad flavor already to the back, to the back of your mouth there, the, through the roof of your mouth there. Let's see if we can get some good flavor in terms of what is lighting it up out there in the options market today. Let's start with the indices. Uh, VIX not blowing the doors off, but not a quiet day either. I guess we're getting, it happens after a few days of decent sell-offs. You start to get a little inured to it out in the market, and that's kind of what we're seeing today. 352,000 contracts coming in to the start of the show here. ADV just ticked north of half a million just recently, 502,000. So we're threatening that today. May have a chance of breaking the ADV. SPY at about 1.65 million contracts. The ADV pretty much double that, 3.3 million contracts. We got SPX at about 567,000 contracts coming into show time the adv also about a little more than 2x about 1.1 million the Qs, 564,000 contracts on the tape as of the start of the show. Uh, 621,000 is the ADV. So a pretty, uh, pretty robust day in the Qs out there today. And uh, Russell, a.k.a. IWM, at least for today's purposes, also lighting it up. Uh, 299,000, 333,000 on the tape. Spoiler alert, we're going to be talking Russell Vall in a bit on TWIFO listeners. And uh, Russell Vall has been moving. The RBX has been moving. It's been gapping up. In fact, it's widened out that RBX VIX spread quite a bit which makes things a little bit attractive out there. So we'll be talking about that in almost an hour on Twifo. Stay tuned for that if you're listening live. Otherwise, listen on the podcast. Just listen to the next show after this one, and you'll be good to go. Uh, in terms of what's active on the equity options, the single-name side of the fence, let's see. Let's look, shall we? Uh, top 10, number 10, NVIDIA, 132,000 contracts on the tape. Number 9, good old Baba with about 137,000 contracts. Number eight, AMD, a buck 45. Number seven, Tesla, always making headlines, continues to do so again today, 152,000 on the tape there. Number six, Bank of America, 159,000 contracts. Uh, number five, Facebook, 209,000 contracts. Number four, GE, 218,000. Number three, Apple, 240,000 contracts. Number two, good old Neo. They, I believe, of the uh, the Chinese electric cars having some some crazy developments over there as well. 346,000 contracts on the tape. And round out the top 10 today, number one, Lily, 596,000 contracts. Once again, actually, no, I take it back. It's not NEO. It's close. NEO, 73% bias to the calls, but it's actually Bank of America taking that title with 75% of the flow today going on the call side of the tape. So they win the award for the most biased paper flow out there today. Speaking of paper flow, got to get to it. The numbers are out. In fact, this is part of our poll for the week. So get on over to Ad Option. Just went live before showtime if you haven't had a chance to vote yet. Uh, we asked you guys at the beginning of the year about uh, about volume. Let's see if this February's numbers 
will change your mind a little bit. Uh, we were kind of debating whether after a record year, 5.1 billion contracts change in hands in 2018. If we could hang with it so far, my prediction was kind of no. I think the Rock Lobster was no. Uncle Mike was the, was the optimistic one, as usual, saying yes, I believe. And so far, at least, uh, unfortunately, the no's have it. Uh, February numbers just announced this week. Uh, total volume in February from the OCC, 354 million contracts. That's down nearly 26% from February of last year, which to their credit was the fifth highest volume month in the history of the OCC. Remember, last February, a few things happened. I took February 2018, so no VIX Ocalypse this year to drive the paper. Year-to-date ADV also disturbing, 19.4 million contracts. That's down nearly 19% from 2018. Let's do, drill down a little bit more. Uh, exchange listed options, that's where we like to hang our hat. 349.1 million contracts in February, that's down nearly 25% from last year. Equity options, drilling down a little bit further, 316.3 million contracts. That's a 20.5% decrease from February. Uh, that includes cleared ETF options volume. If you break that out separately, that's about 119.2 million contracts. That's down nearly 40% from February of 2018. Index volume, break that down as well, 32.7 million contracts, down a whopping 51% from February of 2018. But that's not even the record for the percentage. No, no. For that, you got to look to the futures, which OCC clears a couple of futures products. They clear the crypto ones from the SIBO, at least. But mostly it's VIX futures. And futures OCC volume, 4.8 million contracts. That's down 61.5%. From February of last year. So, ain't looking good for the start of the year. I don't know, Mr. Rock Lobster, Mr. Uncle Mike, and these numbers surprise anyone that uh, we're off as much as we are so far this year, or is this kind of what you expected? Um, I don't know if I expected it to, to be this low, but also, you know, it's just the, the you know, and, and February was pretty good. I mean, it's kind of bullish. So I, I just think you ha we had one off, you know. Last February was a one off. I mean, <laughs> we destroyed two, two, <laughs> two volatility products, crushed all the future volume. I mean, it was kind of a you know, <laughs> hard to repeat that. Not that it can't happen again, but it was. It's hard to fix. It's hard to outdo that for uh, volume and derivative products. Yeah, that was a big moment last year, and you're right, man. That's why, one of the reasons why I voted against uh, seeing those numbers again this year, just because we need those systemic shocks to really drive a lot of that flow, and I just didn't see a lot of those on the horizon, which can be a good thing. Too many of those things is a bad thing. Uh, so if we could generate that kind of volume without those systemic shocks, it'd be nice, but usually it takes a couple of kicks in the old pants to really get that volume, move that volume needle as much as it did last year. So far, at least 2019, we're not seeing it again. It's years young. We have a poll over there, at options. We thought we'd, at the beginning of the year, all of you pretty much thought we were going to blow the doors off 2018. Now we got two months under our belt. Again, the year is still young, but uh, let us know if you still think that or not. Head on over to at options, make your voice heard. It just went live before showtime, so you got the rest of the week to vote. But if you're listening to live, get over there right now. Speaking of getting over to things, let's get right on over to the odd block. It's time to break down the most interesting, unusual, and downright questionable options activity that's been identified by TheOptionsInsider.com. It's time for The Odd Block. Right, everybody, welcome to the Odd Block, the portion of the show where we break down the weird, the wild, the woolly, the wondrous. Sometimes, you know, things are going on before the show time, so we like to kind of just roll with it and kind of read them live, see what's lighting it up live right now. We're going to do just that. Uh, Mr. Rock Lobster liking to hang his hat on the, our first name, actually. He's the one who spotted it. It's uh, some paper out there in good old Kraft Heinz, ticker symbol KHC. Uh, right now, 32, a little bit north of 32 bucks off, about 1% on the day. So a little bit outpacing the market in terms of to the downside, but not a uh, not a terrible day 
out there in good old KHC. But let's see. A year ago, it was trading, oh, a wee bit north of where it is right now, 67 and a half. So pretty much double what it is right now at about 32 bucks right now. Uh, then it's kind of it's kind of was re- most of the year kind of on an inexorable slide to the downside. It had a few pops. It sold off to 54 back in May. Then it kind of rallied a little bit, so it had some life back to 64 again in July. And then it started again on the slow decline all the way down to about 42 on guess when? Christmas Eve. And then it was looking good. It was looking stable up to 48. And then looks like the recent earnings on February 21st really just clipped their wings. They went from 48 to 35, and they've kind of been vacillating below that ever since. So not a good year so far, Mr. Rock Lobster, for uh, Kraft Heinz. What's been catching your eye out there in terms of option flow and Kraft today, sir? Um, well, so, well, you know, Warren Buffett owns a big part of this. They had to I write never heard down of him. Are you a big about? value of it. Huh? Is it. Who's this guy? Jimmy Buffett? Is that you talking about? Yeah, Jimmy, Jimmy, but he has a less famous cousin, I think, Warren. So I, I just, I'm looking at this 30 strike. It's something that uh, Mark started looking at. Somebody just keeps selling these puts, the April 30 puts. They just keep selling them and they keep selling them. And so there's 5,000 traded today. Um, you know, if, and that's, you know, that's not a small amount. What is that? That's 500,000. Notional shares, um, probably nothing for a guy like Warren Buffett, to be honest. But somebody's selling the crap out of this April 30 strike. So no matter how far the stock goes down, they keep selling these puts. Uh, so 20, 24 ball uh, for those puts. So You think it's Mr. Buffett term- looking to acquire some more, sir? Is that, that is his M.O., right? Bla- for the man who says derivatives are weapons of mass destruction, he's never been reticent to blast away to put. No, he hasn't. But why he's good at it? Because he waits to the stock is zero. Then he sells the puts. Of course, what he also <laughs> usually does is he doesn't play in the listed stuff. He'll call up OTC and say, construct me some crazy thing. And then because right. I'm Warren Buffett, yeah, I will get some ridiculous premium to sell these to you. And you will say, thank yes. you, sir. And so that's usually his <laughs> MO as well. It'd be like expiring in like, you know, 2025, some absurd strike with a ridiculous premium to it. So it'd be weird seeing them blasting out in the listed. But I guess crazier things have happened, right? Yep, I've, I, well, I said I always have my story that he's somebody in 1991 sold puts in Coca Cola. Um, tens and tens and tens of thousands of puts in 1991. That was huge volume. Literally single handedly destroyed the volatility on the entire CBO floor by selling these puts. The, the vol and Coke got to 8%. 8%. So um, anyway, they left a lot of. He left a lot of burnt skid marks on on uh, market maker backs. That's for sure. Um, but anyway, um, so anyway, I just see this, and it's it has the hallmark look of that type of trade. You know, value trade. Stock is down, like you said. You know, it's sixty bucks. The value of the franchise is cut in half. You know, I'm not I wouldn't be surprised if people start playing at that level. I mean, 50 percent of it, you know, um, is not a bad spot. So anyway, I just I bring that out because that is like the cheapest vol of anything. So normally when a stock just gets smashed, like, OK, it's going to keep going down. It's going to keep going down or, what? you know, there's usually something. But I mean, right now, it's that is the lowest vol of any strike that I can see. So an out-of-the-money put with the lowest vol, that is not normal. Yeah, um, I'm looking you know, here. So. I'm looking here as we're talking. In today's paper, you're the biggest trade, 3,000 of the 830 puts for a quarter. Crushing, crushing the bid. Then he, he doesn't <laughs> yeah. care which month it is. He's going out to October as well, selling 1,000 of the AK 30 puts for a buck ninety. Uh, and then uh, even April 30s again, another 700 going up for a quarter. So he's just, uh, it's like he's crushing Jan 2020 30s going up 500 times for two and a half bucks. So he's crushing that 30 strike pretty much across the board, sir. Well, just, just to let people know that options, you know, Delta and all that stuff is a little bit, uh, uh, well, let's call it nebulous sometimes as a concept. So uh, what is it? Craft is down 83 cents, and those puts are unchanged on the day at 25 cents. Unchanged. Stock <laughs> down, puts unchanged. So 
again, you of course you're only gonna if you would learn all that kind of stuff at Option Pit because we teach people how options work and trade them and all that kind of stuff. But you know that's they are just getting annihilated. So anyway, it is. But they are probably cheap enough to buy and spread against something else. I'm sure you could come up with a couple of things to do. Um, but that, at least for that as a volume, I thought that was kind of a, a standout type of volume trade, an interesting vol trade, too. Um, and next on my list is the um, is the GE. And, you know, you are seeing enormous volume once again. Now, it's going ex-div, I think, but... Um, the dividend is there's not much of a dividend anymore. It's only a penny, right? So they kind of they took all the fun out of that's the never dividend. stopped them before. They'll still put a million contracts <laughs> through it to get that penny. You watch. Yeah, I guess so. But I mean, you've got uh, the nine level put. You've got twenty nine thousand contracts traded on that put. Um, probably closing. It doesn't look like GE is going to get below that nine level. So I. It's one of these where, um, okay, there was a lot of volume, but uh, somebody's, it's another thing, like, are they, are they killing the nine put? The March vol is down, um, I don't know, 19 or 20 points. And again, it's, it's expiring in a couple of days, but I, I think they're just, you know, people are picking their, uh, they're picking their spots and um, there is some line in the sand action going on here. So the five, the nine put at a nickel is, I, it looks like somebody just wants to, they're offering those things, they want to sell them or take delivery at nine. They feel like they missed missed a golden opportunity when the stock was seven bucks. So they're jumping back in again. So it, it, it could be a closing transaction, uh, could be, but um, more huge, uh, more large and huge volume. And uh, it's not... It's not really going away anytime soon. I mean, you got twenty nine thousand contracts, and the largest size is a thousand. Is um, the largest size on that put is only? I'm looking at it right now. It's all like dribs and drab contracts. So, you know, there's no size trader on that. So, you know, maybe people want to pick up a free nickel. I don't know, <laughs> but that is that is how it appears um, right now. So people are trying to get themselves some GE and dump these jump puts. It is fascinating just how much flow GE has been generating of late. It's just, it's just a machine. Obviously, it's getting into XDiv now, so this current volume is a little bit crazy town. But in general, yeah, it's, just, it's in our top 10 almost, you know, almost every day these days, right? Which is, who would have thought that of six months ago? <laughs> oh, GE, oh, dominating the tape, beating Apple today. I mean, crazy. Again, g- dividend aside, it's still just crazy town. Speaking of crazy town, speaking of blasting away at puts, Mr. Rock Lobster. Let's wind up the odd block. Let's talk about some more put blasting. Why not? Let's just let's just blast out puts today because that's it's a put blast in odd block. Uh, let's wrap it up. Another K name as well. Puts in another K name. This time we're going out to Kroger, ticker symbol KR. This one trading today, taking it on the chin a bit today. I'll have to see if they all had earnings today before they open. So yes, uh, not faring well. Let's just see really quickly if we have them in our earnings move report. We do have them in our earnings move report, courtesy of our friends over there at Orats. You could find it, theoptionsinsider.com. Of course, Kroger going into their earnings was 28, almost 28 and a half. Uh, they were pricing in almost exactly two bucks, a buck 99 in their straddle. And going into uh, the report here, they were selling off almost two X that, about three and a half bucks. And now looks like they've given up some of that in the app in today's intraday trading. Now they're only off about 270, uh, but still off nearly 10 percent and still outpacing their straddle to the downside. So it looks like the market not exactly liking what they were seeing out. They were pricing in about a 20 percent vol and they got about a nearly 80 percent vol as a result. Uh, so big move out here in Kroger. Obviously, things not lighting it up. Let's look back a little bit, see how Kroger has feared over the past year. A year ago, they were actually at about 23 bucks, so they're actually a little bit north of where they were. Then they kind of rallied, and by the time of summer rolled around, they were up to 32 and a half, a late summer, actually. This is into September now. And then they kind of sold off again to about 27 back in October. And then when everything else was selling off in late October, November, they were actually rallying again, up to 32. So it's kind of been a weird topsy-turvy year here for Kroger. And then recently, they were trading 27 and a half again. 
And then until today's uh, number, they were kind of vacillating for the last couple of months around that 27 half to like 28 to not in that mid to high 20s range and then selling off again today, obviously, to about 25 and change. So interesting stuff out here in Kroger. But perhaps, Mr. Rock Lobster, keep ourselves thematically consistent since we're talking about blasting out puts. That's exactly what someone was doing in Kroger today. So someone coming in after the earnings, which is interesting. Usually you see these trades kind of before, <clears throat> but taking advantage of uh, what vol is left post earnings and looks like they're drawing a pretty sizable line in the sand sir coming out this time on the 23 strike in april blasting out 21,931 of those bad boys for 21 cents it's actually below the bid these things were 22 cents at 26 when the trade went up so someone had to give up a penny in order to get nearly 22,000 of these bad boys done also worth noting that is opening and again, like we mentioned, that's all post earnings because the earnings came out this morning. So I guess, Mr. Rock Lobster, they were coming in. And, you know, I, this could make some sense, too. We've seen this before, you know, when there's a big sell off in the earnings or I should say post earnings in that immediate blush when the stock's selling off. When it first opens, the options are bid, right? The vol's bid, everything's bid up. And then once the sell off seems like it hits its, its you know, nadir and then it maybe calms down a little bit that's when the vol starts crushing and crashing in so this guy let's see when he was trading up at 11 13 so i don't know maybe that was a little bit late i don't know but either way if he hit it if you time it just right on those moments you can really get a nice vol crush coming your way after most of this craziness has kind of petered out a little bit uh, that was a, you know we saw that happen a lot back when i was out in intel it was a pretty good trade if you had the bullets to do it uh so maybe that's what this guy is up to here maybe he decided to come in and crush 23 puts 21 cents doesn't seem like the most absurd sale i've ever seen but it's not a bad one uh, also worth noting there were some longer term puts trading out there too in smaller size we saw different uh, downside strikes going out a month or two three thousand lots two thousand so there were other puts trading out there as well so like a lot of them were biased towards selling as well so maybe someone's coming in and drawing some sizable lines in the sand mr rock lobster what do you think of this trade and in general the kind of maybe do you agree with that kind of coming in and you're waiting for maybe the sell-off to, to peter out a little bit, and then you crush what's left of the vol before it implodes. I think that's what our friend was up to here. Um, I, I think that would be an astute observation, Mr. Longo. Um, I've been known to have one or two in my day. Every once in a while. Uh, you know, I think, um, I think that this – because I follow uh, Walgreens a lot. Um, Who doesn't? And – you know, and then this is uh, – but these Kroger and Walgreens got kind of Amazon because Amazon said they're going to start – you know, they're trying to be more aggressive with groceries and, you know, uh, trying to I, – I, I, what's funny is Amazon rolls into storefront retail and everybody thinks that's a great thing when it's one of the most cutthroat businesses there is. And uh, anyway, so – yeah, they're opening but, new uh, freaking supermarkets. Even that, after they already bought a supermarket chain, they're going to open new <laughs> ones. It's like they, they don't have enough. Well, the, the funny thing is, is now, now they're just a supermarket, you know, chain. <laughs> so, like, I don't know. Um, I know their weakness has always been they've got to figure out a way to control their own delivery. So maybe this will be their the method. But um, anywho, uh, I see Kroger and uh, Walgreens. Those are two stocks um, that... I, I'm following just because of the Amazon play. Uh, Walgreens, I might like as a long-term kind of investment, but Kroger just looks a little more opportunistic. And I think somebody's yeah, they're taking the last of the vol and smacking the crap out of it. Um, the, the, the puts are now offered 21 cents, and it's not like Kroger is having much of a better day than it was having, uh, you know, this morning. So. And I, I, you're starting like it's not very much different from the, like the craft where they somebody is just you know they're taking these puts to the woodshed, and some of these, you know, it's not like a fang stock where everybody loves it. I mean, this is kind of like old line and everybody's worried and blah 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 blah, you know. And, and it, I I tend to like stocks that the market hates because you know, you, you buying stuff when it's cheap seems to be easier. So I think this is probably I don't know. An opportunity. Twenty three is like a five year low almost. I think twenty is a five year low, so that is not far away from it. Um, but it seems like a reasonable thing. You know, you get one percent on your money for a month, or just just about that, right? Just about one percent on your money for the month on that put sale. So 
I don't think I don't think from that point of view that might even pass the two saw right a put test. Possibly, I don't know. Uh, but I mean, you're, he doesn't get out of bed unless it's five percent. <laughs> you're getting you're getting That's something, right. right? You're getting right. something is what I would say on this one. You're getting something. So, um, I this one does pass the I would say it passed the sniff test, but it's it's feeling line in the sandy to me, very lineless does have a bit of a line in the sand, and it's also a line in the showtime because we're moving on to our next segment. It is time to go into the mail block. It's time to take your seat on the all-star panel as we read your emails, tweets, Facebook messages, website comments, and much more. It's time for the mail block. All right, everybody. Let's do it. Let's get into your questions, your comments, all your good stuff out there. Let's kick it off. I mentioned at the top of the show we have a poll going, went live just before showtime. Uh, kind of just uh, just getting your pulse again on the world of options volume, like we mentioned at the top of the show. So far, ADV looking a little light off nearly 20% from where it was this time last year. Now, granted, we are comparing to a historic February, but just about every level, so... Bear that in mind. The bar is quite high for what we're comparing to. But still, in January, people forget, too, January was also a fairly active month last year as well. So we had two fairly active months, one historic, uh, to compare to. But still, we need to at least be within spitting distance of those, right, to make the year. Otherwise, you know, March through June's really got to light it up in order to make some of that ground back. But we thought we'd ask you guys, hey, what are you thinking uh, you know, do you still think two months in, do you still think uh, we're going to blow the doors off 2019? Simple question. Yes or no. I will turn back to you two first before I reveal what our early voting is. Mr. Uncle Mike, we'll start with you. You were in the positive camp uh, back in January when we first took the poll of this question. Are, are you still on the positive tip, sir? Positive tip, yes, but we've had a rough start. So I'll still stick with it for another month or so but uh at some stage you got to cut your losses but uh i might be stubborn for a little bit longer say yes i'm positive staying stubborn i expect nothing less mr rock lobster i believe you were on the negative nancy tip are you still leaning that way sir yep yep it's just uh i I, that was i think that was you had two vol events in one year and from a volume point of view it's just hard it's hard to beat that but you know we do have that single digit vol president uh (laughs) Anything can happen. He might get. He might decide to get kind of quiet and tranquil again. You never know. Then there we go back to zone negative one, and all this is is a moot conversation because we're not doing anything. Uh, so uh, yeah, it's uh, all sorts of weirdness. In the early blush voting, again, it's only been live for about forty five minutes. Uh, in the early, <coughs> excuse me, in the early voting, our audience still feeling the love. Seventy percent saying yes, only thirty percent saying we're not going to beat in last year. So. I know there's a lot, of, a lot of pros, a lot of industry folks floating around in our audience, so they have a, a bias perhaps toward when I did this poll at the stack conference back in January. It was overwhelmingly positive. We're going to blow the doors off 2018. So we shall see. We shall see. This will go live through the weekend, and, and we'll talk about the final results next Monday. But interesting stuff. Get over to Ad Options if you haven't done so already. Mr. Uncle Mike. Before we keep going, some of our listener questions, you had an interesting suggestion for a listener slash client question. Why don't you walk us through it, sir? Yeah, so going through this, uh, and this is something for you guys to maybe type up while I'm going through this question. Okay, so let's go maybe about uh, above the money on, um, and by above the money, meaning above the, str- above the current price of the underlying, maybe $100 on Google or so, and a uh, similar percentage on CRM. Uh, and once again, I don't own it. I don't um, trade any options of these stocks. Maybe we have some for long-term holding, but uh, this is just kind of like an educational thing that we're looking at here. The price of the call spread is higher than the price of the put spread with the same strikes for a calendar. So for example, let's say you go maybe two weeks out uh, for the short leg and then maybe a couple months out for to say May for the long leg. And what we're seeing is uh, the price of the call spread being more expensive than the price of the put spread. Now, my theory on this, and I'll, and I'll kind of give you some thoughts on it, and you guys can add to this, being the market-making veterans with which you are. My thought is that uh, one of the reasons for that is that, number one, you're going to see a much wider bid-ask spread on the put side of it. And that's just simply because of the fact that no one's going to buy a put that far in the money, typically. Or no one's going to want to, so there's going to be less demand for it. 
But there does seem to be some type of skew in existence on that. Um, so I'm just kind of curious as to your guys' thoughts from the standpoint of synthetics on from the standpoint of um, where there may be some skew as to why that may be. Now, before you answer, the other thing with it is that right now there are some stocks. Uh, Google is one of them. Google is in the skew fund right now, meaning that um, – for longer term, we're able to buy at the money puts and sell out of the money calls for even money or close to it. Not exactly that. Uh, so with that, like I said, I guess I do own some Google, but it's just or, and my clients do own some of it. Uh, but it's on the skew side of it. It's not in the uh, active trading side of it. So with that edge that exists, do you think that could have something to do with the price differential between an in the money put calendar and out of the money call calendar. Does that make sense to everybody? Mr. Rock Lobster, since you're, uh, since you're, I can hear you breathing like Darth Vader. I must mean you're very excited about this question. So I'll let you, I'll let you go first. <laughs> well, I can never figure out where the mic is on this, these earpieces. <laughs> oh, so I'm trying, I'm I am trying not to breathe, but I, but I turned blue and I had to stop <laughs> and start breathing again. All right, go ahead. So the answer to Tucson's question is it's a cost of carry thing in Black Shoals. So as time goes on, the forward value of the underlying is more. So if you trade a option combination, calls become a little bit more expensive in time relative to puts. Uh, the longer in time, the more, a lot more relative because the cost of carry um, is figured into the model. So depending if there's a dividend, you're going to see something opposite because they got to reduce the calls for the dividend. So it's all in the model. So with that, to add to what you're saying, Andrew, let's say that I want to buy, I want to get an identical position. So I'm going to uh, buy 100 shares of stock and buy a put option, or I can buy a call option at the same strike. And with the rest of the money that I'm not using in the underlying, I could invest it in the six year treasury or six year, six month treasury note and or six month treasury bill rather. And that would finance the cost of the extra premium in the call, thus keeping parity, thus making synthetics uh, as they are. Would that be a fair Correct. statement? That is that is that is a way to say it. yes. Yep. Got it. I would prefer you in the six-year okay. uh, T-bill, though, to be to be precise. You know, you know why lock it up for six months? <laughs> you know months? what? That, that, that three-and-a-half-year T-bill. <laughs> Split the difference. Split the difference. I'll tell you what, though. Interest rates between three and five years now are not that bad. Yeah, so. that, that's where the exciting part of the curve is, right? Post three years, three to five. That's that's. It's it's a lot better it than It kind nothing. of is right now. <laughs> who'd, who'd ever have thunk – I'd say that in a million years. The exciting part of the curve is in between three and five years. Uh, that's not usually a sentence that comes out of my mouth anytime. Uh, maybe on Twifo every now and then. Uh, but, yeah, rates are suddenly uh, of interest of late. So, yeah, you, your clients – Good for a good little question every now and then, Mr. Rock Lobster. Tell your, tell your listener well done, or your listener, your client well done. And if they're ever in Chicago, we'll have we'll to do. get them a beverage. And we'll do it. That, and that actually came out of the Fuqua School of Business at Duke University. It was one of their, it was one of their own that had the question. I was going to say, that. it sounds like an academic might have put that. I was going to suggest that, but I didn't, I didn't, want, to, uh, I didn't want to assume, because you know what happens when you assume. Maybe like our friend E.A. Tripp did. He was commenting on our poll from last week remember we asked you guys oh, what what are you up to right now what's your go-to strat do you like uh we gave you a bunch of choices those long calls long puts or long verticals uh, then we have short calls short puts short verticals and we had i think flies so iron condors iron flies things like that and then we had uh calendars and diagonals and you guys chose the long premium route the long calls slash put slash vertical overwhelmingly nearly 50 percent and uh, ea trip commented on that said how did strangles not make the list well and people had all different, why didn't this? Why didn't this obscure one by three by five make the list? A lot of you had those questions. You know, the truth is there's only four slots, so we can't put every, every strategy. <coughs> if we put strangles, someone's going to write in and say, why not straddles? And then we got to put straddles and strangles. And it's just one of those things where we tried to give a broad spectrum of, uh, of approaches, long premium, short premium, time, uh, spreads with wings. That tends to cover most people. But, uh, yes, if we had infinite slots, we would have put strangles. We would have put F Brian's favorite, the fig leaf, all kinds of weird stuff on there. We just, there's not enough space. Uh, so that's why strangles did not make the list. Do not take, do not take any offense. Um, 
Well, some of these questions seem simple on the surface, but they are, they are very involved. I mean, the cheapest way to buy a put, we could spend, spend days on that question alone. Let me see if I can get some, some quicker ones here. Uh, Andrew Yorbob saying, fantastic shows, just do it. Mark is great. Uh, well, thank you. Uh, that's I think that's from one of, I don't know, iTunes, one of the platforms, one of the reviews in there. If you like what you're listening to, head on over to your platform of choice. It doesn't have to be iTunes. It can be whatever you listen on. And leave us a review, maybe like Andrew did, saying, hey, you like what you're listening to. We appreciate the love out there. Um, let's see. You know, the rest of these are all super long. Uh, yeah, we'll have to, unfortunately, spend a lot of time on that uh, on that Black Shoals one. But uh, we'll keep on rolling into our final segment. It is time to go around the block. It's time to tell you what we'll be watching on our trading screens until the next episode. It's time for Around the Block. All right, everybody, welcome to Around the Block, the portion of the show. We tell you what we're watching. Obviously, the macro winds of war <laughs> are in the air still in terms of trade wars and the malaise that has set in as a result. Uh, there were still some names popping off this week from a micro perspective. Earlier in the week, we had Target, if you like the retail, Kohl's, uh, BF Goodrich was uh, popping up off there, Ross. We have uh, this today, after the close, we have Costco. A name a few of you may have may have made familiar with before the bell. We had Burlington and GNC, so a lot of retail names. BJ's on Wednesday, a lot of retail names. Chico's on Wednesday. Too bad the meatball isn't here. He loves all those. He loves Chico's. That's one of his favorites. Uh, tomorrow before the open, we have Big Lots, Navistar. So there are still some names if you're out there playing. We just like to keep an eye on on the micro world of earnings and the volatility they're in. There are still some names popping off. There are still reports hitting the website, theoptionsinsider.com. Yes, I know. I've been promising a new a new skin on that site for a while. It's coming. It's taking way long. All these things always take way longer than they're supposed to, right, listeners? And that's the case with ours. So the, all of the site's still up there, still, still cranking away, but you should see a brand new version, hopefully hopefully, sometime soon. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, but before we go around the block here, uh, well, actually, let's go around the block. Let's start with uh, let's start with the Rock Lobster, sir. What are you watching aside from your best friend, Mr. Mario Kart? <laughs> Besides Mr. Mario Kart. Um, to be honest, I, I'd like to see this trade thing happen just to see where it goes. If it's positive, if it's negative, if it's continued more on... Um, I don't think there's a lot of, um, there feels like a lot of push to the market. So I think everything's kind of slidey and weak. Um, at least from, that's what the VIX curve says, slidey and weak. Um, and so until that changes, it's probably going to stay that way. Um, and I, I don't expect the whole lot more because we're kind of in that fallow period, like March, there's a couple of earnings coming out, but. You know, without with the ECB basically saying Europe sucks, which is what they said, uh, there's not a lot of reasons to be what we'll call buy call bullish. Um, there might be some reasons to be sell put bullish, but not reasons to be buy call bullish. So, um, anyway, uh, I'll, I'll wait till Tucson gets happy at 2800 and I think about buying calls again in, in uh, the SPX. But until then, um, I think look for more of the same, this kind of sideways sliding and the types of trades that make money that way. You know, these line in the sand ideas that you're seeing on um, that you're seeing, uh, even in the odd block. I mean, that's in a market that's not giving you much. That's really all there is without just taking stupid risks doing something. So that's what we got. I think we got kind of this more sideways thing until something either very positive or very negative comes out of this uh, China trade deal. Our audience is not going to like hearing that. They all voted last week, almost 50%. They want to be long premium right now, particularly long calls, long verticals, maybe some long puts too. Uh, so they're not liking what you're selling, Mr. Rock Lobster. They want to get out there, get at that long premium. So uh, maybe they are buy call bullish. Who knows? We shall see. Uh, this week hasn't worked out too well, so hopefully hopefully that hasn't been the approach you've been taking. Mr. Uncle Mike, are you, sir, are you buy call bullish, especially now that we're south of your magical, mystical 2800 level? Nah, I am dip my toe in the water bullish maybe in another couple hours. So that's kind of where I'm at. I mean, I think 2,800 is a big number we got to get through. Uh, I want to see how the last hour of the trading day goes today as well. But uh, 
if we can, if we stay relatively sideways the, the rest of the day today, what I'd be looking to do at this point is dip my toe in the water a little bit. Cause if you do get in right now, you are catching a falling knife. Let's be honest, at least a, a somewhat falling knife from the 2,800 level. Uh, but it could just be a minor pullback until it really finally makes the big move through 2,800. So I am dip my toe in the water bullish. Maybe how's that for a definitive answer? Hit my toe in the water, bullish, maybe. There we go. That's a, that's your 48% guarantee right there, sir. <laughs> All right. All right. Unfortunately, that music means we have come to the end of at least this show. Not the end of our broadcast day, though, listeners. So stay tuned. If you're listening live, go get a beverage, relax. We'll put some fun stuff in the live stream for you. Maybe some, how about some SPX Time Bomb Butterflies? We got that in store for you. So stay tuned. You can enjoy that in the interim. And then we'll be back in about exactly 30 minutes to talk. Maybe some Russell Vol. Spoilers. We'll be talking about that a little bit as well as a bunch of other things. <coughs> Crude, gold, all the other fun stuff going on in the world of futures options. Stay tuned for that. But before we go, let's go back around the horn. Let's start with, uh, where should we start? Let's start with the Rock Lobster. Let's be nice. Why not? And Mr. Rock Lobster, sir, if I'm intrigued by this slidey, bullish, crate, whatever you called it, market, where should I go? What should I do? Uh, go to optionpit.com. Look at our event page. Look at our how to trade long-term options. Our master class is coming in a couple of weeks, so you don't want to miss it. The master class only at optionpit.com. Maybe someday they'll get that video guy back and he could say it fun too. But in the meantime, you gotta you gotta slum it with me. All right, and last but not least, Mr. Uncle Mike. If I wanna go to St. Charles and learn about some options, maybe have some tasty, delicious Euros, or perhaps I wanna just click on a fox, where should I go? What should I do? And by all means, go to my website, stchartswealth.com. And if you're looking for a financial advisor who uh, is not afraid of the word skew, nor is he afraid of the Vega monster or the Theta monster, or even the Delta monster for that matter, feel free to contact me. I'd love to work with you and uh, keep posted. Uh, sometime in March, we'll have a date nailed down for the option of the St. Charles Investment Club night at my office in St. Charles. What better place is there to be to learn about some options than in St. Charles itself, the magical, mythical land of the Weather Shield and all sorts of fun stuff, and apparently one, one line to the internet. And on behalf of Uncle Mike and the Rock Lobster, and indeed myself, I want to thank all of you downloading, streaming, subscribing, voting on our polls, listening live, sending in questions, great and small. We love them all. And we'll see you back here in about half an hour for Twifo. Otherwise, we'll see you back here next week for more of the Option Block. The preceding program was a production of the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider or via questions at the options insider.com. 